Well, hello and welcome back to That Girl's Quilting Threads and Things. And if this is your first time visiting the channel, welcome. Today's quilt block is a flag quilt where we utilize an air castle for the Field of Stars portion. So let's go ahead and get started. So for today's flag quilt block, here are the different pieces that we're going to use. So I'm going to use a two light and two dark fabrics for the split quarter square triangle units. Then I'm going to use a light and dark for our square and a square units. Then our stripes are going to be made up of our red and white fabrics or red and light fabrics. And our half square triangles are going to be made up of two blue fabrics, a medium and a darker version. There's no preparation for these striped units. So I'm just going to set those off to the side for now. And let's go ahead and start with our half square triangles. Now our half square triangles are going to be made at four at a time. What we need to do is we're going to take our medium and our dark fabric, place them right sides together, make sure that they line up nicely, and we're going to pin them in two different places. We're going to sew one quarter inch seam allowance all the way around the edge. Then we're going to come back and we're going to cut them crisscross, diagonal corner to diagonal corner, diagonal corner to diagonal corner. And that's what's going to give us our four at a time. So this block is prepped up for our half square triangles. The next unit is going to be our square and a square. For our square and a square unit, we need one light colored block and we need four small triangles. Let's draw a line diagonal corner to corner. Then you're going to take two of your squares and you're going to place them right sides together on top of the light fabric. So this here is stage one of our square and a square. Now what we'll do with this is we're going to take and sew right on that stitch line corner to corner, right on that stitch line corner to corner. Now some people's practice will be that you sew just scant on the outside of that stitch line. Because what happens is when you go to fold your fabric over, and I'm just going to fold it from this side to give you reference. When you go to flip on that stitch line, there is some real estate that that fold takes up. And so by sewing just scant on the side of the line, when you go to flip that corner over, you're going to have the proper amount of fabric real estate needed to make sure that your square in a square has nice edges that line up with the main fabric. All right, so let's go ahead and take this unit and our half square triangle four at a time unit over to the sewing machine. Okay, so for our first unit, we're going to go ahead and sew that quarter inch seam allowance around the outside of our squares. Okay. Now here, if you can see, I have this quarter inch seam tape and it's got these quarter inch lines on it which I really really like. So what I'm going to do is not only do I have my drawn line but I'm also going to take the point of my square which is right here and I am going to make sure that that point is on this line which is aligned with my needle line. And that helps give me a visual indicator as well that I am sewing straight. All right. And now simply take and spin it around. Repeat the steps. So now let's go ahead and continue finishing up with our square and a square. So for a square and a square, we can flip 
these square units open, finger press them, use your nail, it works great, um, or use your finger, or if you have a handy presser, a uh, little handy presser device, maybe something that looks like this. You can use this to just roll over it and that works just as well also. So now that we have our first two squares done on our square and a square, now we're ready to attach our remaining two small squares and we're going to repeat the same steps as we did before. Okay, so I'll just add a pin here, attach the second one, and we're going to sew the same way we did before. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and finger press this unit open. We want to go ahead and cut off the outer portion, leaving roughly a quarter of an inch for that seam. Our square and a square is done. Let's go ahead and go back to the table and let's finish up our half square triangles and get started on our split quarter square units. So we have our two fabrics sewn together around the outer edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now all we need to do is make two cuts to get four half square triangles. So the first cut I did was to go corner to corner diagonally and then the second cut I picked up my rulers, second cut corner to corner this way and cut. And now I have four half square triangles. All right, so I'm gonna press these open and these are gonna be sized down actually quite a bit, which in this case is going to be two and a half inch square blocks. All right, now we're ready to do our split quarter square units. This fabric here is gonna represent our A piece. Then this fabric here is gonna represent our B piece. Then we have this fabric here, which is going to represent a C piece, and this fabric will also represent a C piece. Normally, when you do your split quarter square triangles, the pieces that you need will yield four units, okay? So it would look something like this, but I actually have modified mine just a little bit so I have different, so it gives it a little bit more of a scrappy unit. For our B and C combinations, and this is gonna give you two spare pieces. All right, so you're gonna take one of your C unit fabrics and place it right sides together with one of your blue fabrics. Then you're gonna take another C fabric and you're going to place it right sides together with this unit. Now for your A fabric unit, which you should have two, you are just simply going to cut that in half diagonally for both of those pieces and that's going to give you four triangles. Make sure that if you're cutting them both at the same time, just make sure that they're lined up diagonal to diagonal. All right, so now I have four triangle units. So when you're handling these, again, be very, very conscious that since they are on the bias, that they are easily distorted. Now you're going to take your B and C fabric, place them right sides together, and you're going to draw two lines. And there's a good reason for drawing two lines as opposed to one. All right, so we're gonna start by drawing two lines from corner to corner diagonally, one quarter inch away from the center. Next, you're gonna draw two more lines the same way in opposing corners. So now you have four lines drawn and you should have as near of a perfect square as you can right in the middle of your unit. Now, these are your stitching guidelines. The next thing that I'm going to do instead of eyeballing it is I am going to take and I am going to find the center of each line 
in this square. So I have that square right here and I'm going to mark a tick mark at that center mark, a tick mark at that center mark, and I'm going to repeat the steps. Tick mark here and a tick mark here. These tick marks are going to be pivot points for the needle. I'm actually going to draw out the path of where my needle is going to travel. On the inside of your drawn line, you're going to put your needles scant on the inside of your line and your needle is going to travel all the way to that first center tick mark. Then you're going to pivot your needle and you're going to go all the way over to the next line just scant before you get to it. All right. And then you're going to pivot your needle again and you're going to continue sewing down and we're going to repeat the same exact stitch path. So we're going to again just scant on the inside of the first drawn line all the way to that center tick mark, pivot 90 degrees, pivot 90 degrees again and finish your needle path. So if you follow the red, the red is where my needle is going to follow this path. So following that stitch line path, lining up that red line with my needle hole, and here we go. going all the way down until I hit that center tick mark, pivot 90 degrees, going over to the next tick mark, pivot 90 degrees the opposite direction, and finishing up that stitch line. Now we're going to repeat that same process on the other drawn line. Pivot, Pivot. So when we go to cut this at four at a time, we're going to take and cut down in the center of each of our drawn lines. And cut right down the center, corner to corner. And then you should have four units that look like that. And then when you open them up on the different on the different sewn lines, you now have split triangle units. So for this pattern, there are two pairs of fabric because I was going for the scrappy look. So I, I need two from this pair. These two are spares to be used in a later project. So I will take two from this pair, which is the darker blue and the light. Cut again, corner to corner. Two are spares, so they get set aside. And these. So again, open it up, and remember these are on the bias, gingerly, finger press towards the dark. All right, now I have four split triangle units. Now let's take our four triangle units that we cut from fabric A. Take our A right sides together, make our center point Align it right where these two meet and I pen. And if I have cut them or a little bit off, my, my experience is that I'll take these, the right angle edge of my triangle from my A unit, I will take that and line it up with the right angle of my split 
square uh, split triangle unit, which is my B and C unit pieces. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take these to the sewing machine and we're going to sew one quarter inch seam allowance down this edge. And it's okay to take your time when you're sewing these units together. So again, just being conscious and aware that the fabric is easily stretched. Our split quarter square units are done. So now all we need to do is we need to roll these open, finger press. So that's our quarter square split triangle units. All right, so I'm going to take these to the pressing station and I'll join you back and we'll show I'll show you how to square these units up. Okay, so our field of stars is basically done. The units have been completed. Now that everything is here and it's laid out, let's go ahead and finish up preparing our units by squaring them up. All right, and we're going to go ahead and let's start with the square and a square unit. All right, each one of these units needs to be two and a half by two and a half. And when you're working with small units, you really need to pay attention to detail. <laughs> With our square and a square, we want it to be two and a half by two and a half. The center part of my square and a square will measure at one and a quarter. So I want to try my best to make sure that my one and a quarter inch mark going vertically aligns with these two points of my square, this one and this one. And then respectively, I want to make sure that my one and a quarter inch mark going horizontal lines up with this point and this point. And it might take a couple of cuts to make sure that this is balanced. Okay, so we made that one cut. So now let's go ahead and line up our one and a quarter inch one and a quarter inch and trim. So this should be two and a half inches square. All right, so next we're going to do our split quarter square triangles. This needs to be two cut down to two and a half inches so that it will finish at two inches. We're going to find the middle measurement. So if this needs to be cut to two and a half inches, half of that is one and a quarter. So where are one and a quarter inch lines, both vertical and horizontal are, where that point intersects, that is the same point that we want to align to the center of our split square triangle right there. So let's see this in action. We have our one and a quarter inch vertical and our one and a quarter inch horizontal. That is going to line straight with that. The other key point is that your 45 degree line needs to stay parallel right down the center of that unit so that when you make your cut, that 45 degree line will run corner to corner. So let's make that first cut and turn in it 180 degrees. Again, lining that quarter inch mark right there where the two meet and my 45 degree line is running corner to corner of the unit and making your second cut. And there you have a two and a half inch quarter square triangle. So I'm going to finish squaring these up, all right, following the same steps. 
Now for the half squared triangles, these are actually quite simple. They're already squared up, but to give you the basic idea, what you're going to make sure that you do is we needed these to be two and a half inches. So what I did was I simply took my 45 degree line, I aligned it exactly along the center line between the two different fabrics, and I gave myself a little extra wiggle room, and I made my first cut to give me a true edge. And that made sure that my triangles, that the fabric on my triangles was split all the way corner to corner, all right? And then I turned it 180 degrees and I repeated the same steps, aligning my ruler marks at exactly two and a half inches by two and a half inches. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and let's lay out the block in its entirety. So this is gonna be the basic layout of our quilt block. All right, and we're first gonna start by putting our field of stars units together. And this is put together like a basic nine patch. So we're gonna take these two patches, place them right sides together. So a quarter inch seam allowance, do the same thing with these two, the same thing with these two. Then we'll come back and we'll attach these to each row and then we'll attach our rows together. Now I would recommend that when you go to press before you attach the rows together, that for these, for the top row, you press the seams going outward. For the middle row, you press the seams going inward. And for the bottom row, you press the seams going outward. Okay, starting with our field of stars. Going to take this and give it a quick press, come back, put the stripes together, and finish assembling the block. All right, let's go ahead and start with our top stripes, right sides together, quarter inch seam allowance. Now for the short striped units, I'm pressing towards the light side instead of the dark side so that when I attach the field of stars to it, my seams are able to nest with these two seams. And with the bottom half, I'm pressing towards the dark. 
And what that basically does is when you have a light fabric, if you press your seams towards the light fabric, sometimes that seam will show. So this is just a, a quality uh, technique for your quilt block. All right, so next we are, we're ready. These are our three subunits. Now we're gonna go ahead and attach our field of stars to our shirt stripes. Right sides together, nesting our seams. I'm gonna go ahead and pen. All right, that's the top half. And now we're ready to attach our bottom stripes. Here, there are no seams to nest or match up. So you just wanna make sure you have a nice straight line and that you have a good quarter inch seam allowance. All right, and there you have it our 12 and a half inch unfinished flag quilt block with the air castle star variation for the field of stars and her stripes. And here is the six inch version as well. Quite a challenge, but always fun to accept. Thank you very much for joining me on this journey today. I hope that it was easy for you to follow. I hope that you got something out of it and I can't wait for your comments and feedback. As always, may all of your quilting projects be joyful, one stitch at a time.